with our animation complete, it's time for us to start rendering our animation. The process of rendering the computer is really the, the time when the computer draws each individual animation frame for us. Instead of us having to go in and hand draw everything, the computer is going to use a collection of rules, lights, cameras, materials, and an understanding of our physical world to draw the computer generated images for us. It's pretty neat. However, there are a couple things that we need to look at that are specific to your project file and your computer to ensure that when we render it, everything is going to work out just fine and everything is going to be saved at the appropriate location. So the first thing that we need to do is just make sure that the animation is in fact done. You only want to render once. It can be a time-consuming process depending on the complexity of your scene and what you're working with and your computer itself. So we want to make sure that we're really confident that we are done, done, done before we ask the computer to render our image. Let me just play my animation here real fast, and I'm pretty happy with that. Now, we want to do a good spot check uh, on, the, on the camera view as well. So I'm looking over here, and yeah, that looks pretty good. One other thing, if you want to work inside this big viewport, you can also hit this little icon right there, and that's going to show you, uh, that's going to show you what the, the render camera is going to see. So I'm just going to play the animation. Yeah, that's looking pretty great. I'm pretty happy with that. That's going to work out just fine. I think that's going to work out fine. I am done with the animating, and now I'm ready to render. The next thing that we need to examine is all of our output settings. And this is really where we set up the, the specific components and some of the utility properties of the rendering engine to ensure that what we render is saved to the correct location, that we're creating the correct file size, and we're also having the correct timeline properties for our render itself. So let's look at some of those. We'll start with our timeline properties and then advance on to the files in a second. So we're gonna start at the top, work our way down to the bottom. First and foremost, we need to change the frame rate from 25 to 29.97. That's gonna be the frame rate that we're gonna use for this class. This is the frame rate for broadcast television, which is pretty cool. In addition, we also want to make sure that the frame start and end channels have the correct values. I know that my animation stops on frame 60, so I want to have it render to frame 70. That way there's a, a good third of a second there where there's a small little pause before the animation cycles again. Okay, once you have those two established, we can now start traveling down into the output section of all of these properties in this category. And this right here is super important as this defines the location where the file is going to be saved on your computer. If you don't change this, it's going to be saved into a temporary storage location on your computer. And you don't want that. You want to be able to directly manage and manipulate the data that we create from Blender. So know where you're going to save this file. I'm going to save it right here on the desktop of my computer. That way I can easily manage this and upload it to Canvas. Okay, the next thing that we need to do is change the file format, this right here. We're going to change it to FFmpeg video, which is going to create a wonderful video that can be, that can be played on any computer on the face of the planet. The container that we're going to choose is going to be the QuickTime container. This is going to require an open, uh, this is going to open the file in the QuickTime movie player, which is great. It's free, it's accessible on every computer on the face of the planet, and it provides access to a wonderful suite of professional compression tools that really retain the quality without uh, get producing huge file sizes. Now, if you don't like using QuickTime or if it doesn't work on your computer, you can also use the Matroska file type. This is going to be opened in the VLC open sourced video player that we've used in other classes, but either of these two are going to be just fine. Excuse me. Uh, under the video codec settings, if you're using QuickTime, just make sure you're using H.264. This is the latest and greatest technology coming out of the video compression world. It's fantastic. I use this for all of my web distribution stuff. And for the context of this class, it's perfect for uploading easily over into Canvas. If you'd like, you can certainly change it from medium quality to higher quality. It's going to make the file size a little bit bigger, but it's not going to be too noticeable given the duration of the file that we're creating. Okay, so once we have those settings set up, it's really good to do a couple good spot checks on what the render engine is going to produce for us. I'm going to park my play playhead over here at frame 60, and I'm going to render a still image first. Rendering a still image using the EV rendering engine, it's going to go pretty fast. We have two different rendering engines that we have access to inside, uh, inside of Blender. We have the EV rendering engine, which is almost a real-time rendering engine. It's going to render it very, very quickly. 
Um, and then we also have the full-blown production scale rendering engine called Cycles. We'll talk more about Cycles as we get further on into the course, but for the lion's share of what you're going to be doing for your homework in a lab, the EV rendering engine is going to work just fine. I bring this to your attention because the moment that you hit the render button, the EV rendering engine is going to launch, but we're, you're not going to see um, an immediate preview of the picture. It's going to calculate and then produce the picture for you. So at times it can feel like you haven't done anything. Let's render an image, just a single still image to spot check the render, make sure it's looking really good and awesome and just has all the characteristics that we want before we go any further. To render inside of Blender, we're going to go up to the render pull down menu at the top of the screen. And in here we have two different options. We have render image and then render animation. We're going to start with rendering image and then as you would imagine, we're going to render our animation here in a minute. The keyboard shortcut is function 12 or F12 on your keyboard good one to commit to memory because you're going to be using this a lot. Or you can just keep going back up here to the render uh, the render window or the render pull down window to render off your file first frame. I'm going to hit F12 on my keyboard and fire off my first render. As you can see, it doesn't do anything until the render is complete. The moment the render is done, boop, you'll pop up window and this is what the picture is going to look like. This is a rendered image. This isn't a preview. What you see is what you get. So this is what the final image is going to look like. Now I'm going to travel over to a different frame, maybe this frame, and I'm going to hit render again. So F12 one more time. As you can see with the render window open, it pops up the moment the render is complete. And things are looking pretty good. I'm pretty pleased with how this render is going to look. So let's go ahead and start firing off an actual render of our animation. I've set my first frame to 1, my last frame to 70. I'm ready to rock and roll. Let's go ahead and do this. Now I'm, it's going to take a, a couple minutes to render the animation. But we're going to get a nice, cool little preview here of what the, the rendering process looks like. I'm not going to go through the entire render, but as you can see, the moment it's done rendering one frame, it advances the playhead forward one frame and then draws a new picture. And it's slowly going to work through all these frames. If at any time you need to stop your render, it's really easy. It's just the escape key. And I'm going to stop it just so you can see what it looks like. Hit the escape key and it's going to stop the render. Render. That's the cancel button, the global cancel button for rendering an image right here in Blender. Now, when you're all done, there'll be a file on your desktop, okay? And the file and the location of that file, as we saw earlier, is determined by what we have right here. So make sure you understand where you're saving your file. It's going to go in this location, and that's something that you have to set. If you don't know where you're saving the file, I don't know where you saved the file either, so make sure you're managing your media before you hit that big big fat render button. And then when you're done, make sure you take a look at it. It's just going to be a QuickTime movie like any other QuickTime movie. And then you're, uh, because it's a QuickTime movie and relatively small, you can easily upload this to Canvas at the conclusion of your homework and your lab assignment. So that's how we're going to render all of our assignments in this class. Naturally, we'll talk more about the render settings and lightings and cameras and all that other stuff. But for our first time out, it really is just that easy.